Hello there, and welcome back to this tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to be setting up our environment so that we can develop on the Arduino Nano the 3 license. I'll be setting up the Arduino web editor and see so how we can communicate with the Arduino board from the web editor. I'll be setting up the Google Laboratory platform and also TensorFlow. And lastly, I'm setting up the Edge Impulse platform. Don't worry if this is the first time of using the platforms, I've been working you throughout to register and get familiar with the platforms. So let's get straight in. We'll be setting up Arduino Web Editor, Edge Impulse, Google Collab, and also TensorFlow. So the first thing you want to do is to set up Arduino Web Editor. And to do this, you need to create an Arduino account if you don't have one already. And then you can, from there, link to the Arduino Web Editor. So you can simply search for Arduino Web Editor. You can, this is very simple. You can just search for Arduino Web Editor. And then you see the first thing that will pop up, which is the Arduino Cloud. You can just click on this. So here you are in the Arduino Cloud. If this is your first time, you might see a different setup entirely. But if this is your first time, you should see something similar to this. First thing, you'll be, you, you'll be prompted to create an account. Create an account. Feel free to create an account. You can just create an account or sign in using Google. And then you'll be good to go. So once we are done creating an account, I already have my account created. So it automatically logged me in. If I sign out, I can automatically sign in back. But if this is your first time, you may, you may have to create an account. So once we are done creating an account, we have an interface that looks like this. So before you can start writing any code at all, you just come to create new. So here we have different things you can create. You can create a dashboard, triggers, thing, and sketch. So what you want to click is create sketch. So as I mentioned, we are going to be using simultaneously both the Arduino online editor and the offline editor. But then the most important thing that we need to set up is the online editor first because this is actually out of the box and we don't need to do a lot of setup and a lot of configurations. So if this is your first time of connecting your Arduino, even if you have an Arduino account before, but this is your first time of setting up the web editor, you'll be prompted to install the Arduino cloud agent and you see a pop-up that comes or underneath this place. So if this is your first time, if you have connected your Arduino to the web editor before, you don't need to do this and you can just skip to the other part of the video. So I'll just go ahead and download the Arduino Cloud Agents now. To do that, I'll click on Learn More. So it's going to open a new tab and give me a platform where I can download. So we are going to be following this instruction to install the Arduino Create Agent. You can just read through. The first thing is to click on this link, you click on Download, then so you can simply follow the instruction here and then you have the Arduino Create Agent. So this is my first time also. I'll just click on Open Arduino Create Agent Installation page. So then I'll click on Start. So it asks for us to select for Win32 or Win64. So I'm on Win64. I'll just click here. So it pops up to download the Create Agent. I'll just save this in my folder. So once it's done, it's very small. It's just 60.7 MB. I'll install this. So there was a security prompt that came up. Just click on Yes. Finish. So once I click on finish, it automatically sees that I've installed an agent. As you can see here, it says agent correctly installed. After that, I'll click on next. Then I'll click on go to web editor. So with this, I'm done installing the Arduino create agent. So I can now write code on the cloud or on my web browser and send it to the Arduino that I have physically plugged into my computer. So that's the first thing you want to do. Once once I've done setting this up. We are done with Arduino Cloud, uh, the Arduino Web Editor. So we still come back here and see how we can do a simple demo. But before that, let me quickly set up the other things that we need. I'll just show you what we need to set up. So the second thing we need to create is just to create an account on Edge Impulse. We are going to be using this platform a lot in Boss. So you can start for Edge Impulse. This is this where we are going to be doing all our machine learnings, all our trainings. So if this, if this is your first time, you have to create an account. So you have all these, you can read through to learn more about Edge Impulse. It's a very wonderful platform. Accept, and you can log in. So again, if, you're, if, if this is your first time, you click on sign up, then you just follow the prompt and you'll be able to sign up. But I'm logging in now. I've already created an account, so just click on login. And depending on whether this is your first time or you have a lot of projects created or not. So these are some of the projects I've worked on before. So you have a similar prompt like this. If, if this is your first time, you might not see anything here. And to create a project, you just click on create project. But then don't worry about that now. We are going to be dealing with that more in the future tutorials. So this is another thing that you need to set up Edge Import Impost Platform. 
And lastly, we need to set up the collab. So there's not much of setting up to this. Once you have a Google account, you already have a collab. And then let's just see what we have inside that collab. You can see, you can simply just search for Google Collab. Instead of typing the website, you can just search for it. You Google Collab, I'll just click on the first thing that I'm seeing, which is collab.google. So again, if this is the first time, I need to just click on sign up or just open Collab. So Google Collab is simply just like Jupyter Notebook, but on the web. And then it comes with a lot of libraries, a lot of softwares installed. I also have access to GPUs using Google Collab. So yeah, I'll just click on open Collab and then you'll be directed to collab.research.google.com. So these are uh, prompts. The first thing you'll be prompted with once you come into the website. So you just want to create a new collab now. Just click on new notebook. And this you have a uh, Google Collab. So this is another thing you need to set up. We're going to be working through how to use some of this platform later on. For example, if you want to rename your project, just click on this title. So just do what we do in Jupyter Notebook. I've called this Honey MF1. And then we simply rename our notebook. And then to start writing any code, let's say I want to write a simple Python code. I can just put two plus three and then also shift run. So I have five. So one very important thing that I need to do here is that if you are using your collab for the first time or if you just open it for the first time, you'll be using a CPU. So what you want to do is to change it to a GPU. And how do you do this? You simply come to runtime and click on change runtime type. And I see you have option of selecting, for example, currently we have CPU selected. So you have this option of selecting GPU and then you can click on save. So it is show connecting to Python backend GPU, as you can see here. And also it shows connecting. So once it's connected, you can see that we have T4 here and everything we have is a GPU. So now we are running on a GPU and then we have more time and then our development is going to be much more faster than using a CPU. That's basically everything I'm going to set up. The Arduino Cloud. We just have to set up Edge Impulse Platform and also Google Collab. So once we are done setting all these three up, you are good to go. So one thing now we do now is to go back to my Arduino Cloud and try to create a simple project and see how we can connect it to our Arduino. So this was where we were the other time. Before we click on Learn More, let me refresh this. So you see, it's no more showing the prompt for us to download the Arduino create agent. So what I need to do now is that I will go ahead, plug in my Arduino Nano 3 b license to my computer and try to see if I'm be able to write code and send it to it directly from the web editor. Now I go ahead and plug in my Arduino Nano 3 b license to my laptop. So I have the Arduino Nano board already hooked up to a temporary development board as a breadboard. And I have the cable connected to it. I'm just starting into my computer. And as you can see, it makes some form of sound. So now let me go on and upload the link sketch on the board and see how it will behave. So after plugging in the Arduino to the board, you will see that yeah, it shows me I have Arduino 93 b license selected on, on port 6. If this is not showing in your own case, you can just click on select device and then search for it. If I click here now, it automatically detects my board. This is what should happen on a normal day, but in case yours does not automatically detect your board, you can just click on the select device and then you're able to select the type of device that you are connecting. It doesn't matter any type of device you are connecting, whether a normal Arduino Uno or Nano or any form of Arduino at all. So you can just select the device type if it's not the same as what is being shown, but most likely it's going to be correct. So what I will do now is to upload the blink sketch. To do that, I'll just come to this examples and then I can select basics and then I click on blink. So here I have the popular blink Arduino sketch. So what I'll do, I don't need to verify, I'll just click on upload directly and hopefully this will upload, this will be uploaded to my Nano 3 BLE sense board. It's uploading now. Yeah, and it shows me done uploading. So what I need, let me just go back and check my Arduino if it's done uploading. So back to my Arduino, and I see that the blink has been successfully uploaded. If you can check in, you see there's a blink over here showing that the blink code is running. So with this, we've successfully hooked up our 
Arduino and on the three BLE sense board to our computer without using the Arduino offline editor. We are using the web editor. So you can also use the offline editor to do this. But well, I'm not going to be demonstrating that it's very straightforward in this tutorial. Maybe in some tutorial that will be using the web, the offline editor, we might show that. But for now, just try and set up your Arduino web editor and make sure it is working. And once we have everything set up, we are good to go. One last thing before I round up this tutorial, we can see that with the Arduino web editor, we can write our code and send it to our board. It can be the Nano 3 bell license, or it can be the Arduino Pico, or it can be the RP2040 board. And we're going to be seeing how we can set those other ones to up in the future tutorials. So, another thing we set up was our Google Colab. You may ask yourself, what are we going to be doing here as time goes on? And why are we using Google Colab? Is that it doesn't need any setup. We don't need to download anything on our computer. It's just straight out of the box in the web. It's working. So it is cloud-based and it is hosted by Google. So it's always reliable. There are a ton of Python libraries that come with it that we don't need to install on our computer using PIP, including TensorFlow that we are going to be using a lot. Also, it can easily integrate with our Google Drive and we can easily link up any code or any document to it or any form of training data at all. And it's easy to use and also free. So I think everything we need is already inside Colab, so we don't need to download any other thing on our laptop. So, another thing we installed, another thing we set up was TensorFlow. What we're going to be doing here is very simple. We are going to be doing all our data acquisition from sensor data, from the sensors on our devices, or from any other sensors. Also, we are going to be applying data signal processing routines to the input data using edge impulse. We are going to be doing quite a lot of things here. Most of our workload will be done on edge impulse. So we are going to be building and training our ML models. We are going to be testing the models here. And we're also going to be deploying the models using Edge Impulse to our microcontroller. So we're going to be finding the best processing block. We apply different form of decision matrix. We apply different form of use cases so that we have a perfect model for us to be, for, for us to deploy. So that's basically what we're going to be doing in the different platform that we have set up. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. I hope you understand everything that I did there. You can, if you are unable to set up anything, you can feel free to ask a question in the comment section below. Or you can maybe try to work this over from the beginning again. Or also try to read some documentations about some of this platform that we just set up. So, thank you very much. And I'll see you in the next tutorial. If you find the tutorial helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, like, don't forget to share with anybody that might need it. And again, don't forget to subscribe so that you'll be updated on next tutorials. So, thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.